Okay, so we are delayed. <laughs> it, we're 10 minutes later at the minute than what we were just to pass. The flight is due to be delayed an hour. Hello everyone, welcome back to Peace Amelia Travel today. I'm flying my most flown airline, Thomas Cook, from Manchester Terminal 1 to Rhodes. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you Thomas Cook's Airbus A321, which has 220 seats and is the main aircraft in their fleet, which is mostly used on European and short haul flights. But leg room with aircraft is apparently really poor, so we're going to see. That for ourselves, of course. And, and I've got a window seat, so we're gonna have some great views for you guys. And as you always say in these videos, I am flying from Manchester, even though I live in Liverpool. There is actually an easier flight from Liverpool to Rhodes, but Thomas Cook was actually cheap, I believe it or not, which I'm still shocked about that myself. Anyway, Thomas Cook is going through a lot of financial difficulty at the minute, so. That might be the reason why no one wants to fly with them, so... But anyway, uh, I've got good opinion of Thomas Cook. I've flown on their flights many times uh, across Europe and to my first holiday in Mexico. So, I'm very uh, pleased that we're flying with them. However, the check-in process on land this night was a bit weird and quite hard to navigate, so I've got a little bit of a sour feeling going into this experience, but... Hopefully, it will be a good flight, and you're gonna see it right here on Peace Amelia Travel. So, without further ado, let's get down to the Dodecanese. Okay guys, we're now through the security. I'm going to tell you about the security shortly, but we're here now in the heart lounge, so... Okay, so we're, like I said before, we're through the security now. Well, it is literally that security. Nobody was organised there, and I'm talking about passengers. The staff were all brilliant, so they had to have a lot on their hands to deal with. Anyway, they had a lot on their hands. Uh, some man behind me tried to bring a full bottle of after like a 200 milliliters, I think. And then there was this these women behind us who were bringing through the entire like chemist way for toilet trees. <laughs> so uh, we were all organised anyway and we're now through and so we've got a while to go before the flight so we're gonna go and grab something to eat shortly. Okay so we're now in Druva getting something to eat uh wait that to come Okay, so as I said, I got a steak on this cube. I know I'm going to eat this all, and I've got some chicken and a pepper, corn sauce, and some lettuce. So I'm going to try and eat this down now. Hopefully, before we hold it. Firstly, that was really, really nice. I managed to get through the majority of it. Um, just, I'm absolutely stuffed now, though. I uh, need to go on board shortly. Just want to go to uh, one of the shops before we go. And then we will be boarding MT1448 to boot. Okay, so we managed to get the shop in time. I'm a bit like, oh, we'll the place in a minute. They didn't have ale and then a magazine and W.E. Smith, I'm a bit annoyed. So we're now going to gate 32 where we will board our flight to Rhodes. So I'm just exhausted. <laughs> right, let's go. So that out there, you can't really see it very well, it's our aircraft, it's an A321 built in 2013. So it's just off board and the priority customers and so we're, we'll be in the second queue and then we will head over to the aircraft. Got to say this terminal is so big, there's so many piers where the gates are along. I haven't been here in a long time since 2015, I think in this terminal so. I sort of forgotten how it was laid out. 
so been a lot of walking to do <laughs> and not here anyway so I'm gonna get on the plane shortly. I'm at just like one of those points where I just really wanna get on the plane now. <laughs> this uh, terminal is actually going to be uh, demolished very soon uh, and replaced by the brand new terminal uh, extension onto terminal 2. <coughs> However this gate area here is actually going to be staying as it will be connected to the new terminal so it's going to be a bit of a walk from but you know, it's got to be that some of this terminal can be retained of course it's a really really nice terminal it's just, just too big. <laughs> Here's our plane then, a bit of a better view of it. It's an old See it on the plane. So here's the view on the wing. You can see got a nice shot off with the sunny heart and then we've got a beautiful Etihad Dreamliner there. And there's some more aircraft here at Manchester. Okay, so we're now on the plane. It's, it's very uh, nice and comfortable, nice cabin design. It have it a little um, smaller cramped. But overall, very impressed so far. In contrast to what I've heard, the leg room is actually completely fine. Uh, I'm 5'8", uh, so pretty decent for me. It is only 26 inches, which is the lowest I can give you. So like I say, it could be better, but completely fine. So we're in flight mode now, uh, just waiting for us to depart out of Manchester of course. I mean everyone's on board now so hopefully we'll get underway shortly. Okay so we are delayed, <laughs> uh, we're 10 minutes later at the minute than what we were due to depart. The flight is due to be delayed in hour uh, because there's a, fun, a thunderstorm in Belgium. Uh, so they've said a uh, cockpit visit so I went down then and the captain, uh, Chris, his name is, is absolutely uh, really lovely. I didn't manage to get any pics in there, well I, I have actually, I'll, I'll pull it up in a second. Uh, fun, uh, fantastic, we um, had a little chat about airbooks, you know, and the aircraft and he asked me a few questions and if you don't get them all right you're not coming and I got them all right. So, <laughs> uh, so basically what's happened is there's been a thunderstorm in Belgium and uh, all the air traffic controllers have been sent home there so they've got to find an alternative route and everybody has taken that alternative route so we have to wait unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, so I just had another announcement. Uh, captain's letting more people in the cockpit, so that's not a sign we're going anywhere soon. I'm going to check the time now. 20 past 6, so latest is an hour, so 10 to 7 will be the latest we'll be leaving. You know, who knows? This one could miss the slot and we could jump in there. <laughs> but with how empty it is at the minute, it looks like that's not going to happen, so that just wait. I think we our fingers crossed that we can get going soon. Okay, so I've just been on a flight radar and we're, it, we're actually live on flight radar, I don't know, so that, is that a sign that we're leaving? I'm hoping it's, uh, 
but I mean, it's, it's been nice to track myself for once instead of tracking other people. <laughs> so it's just after like 7 o'clock and control. we are now getting underway, they've just done the safety announcements. Uh, so just waiting now to taxi to the runway and then we will be off. So the crew are coming round now with their service. Uh, don't plan to anything, I'm going to go some drinks in the airport, and obviously we've eaten at the airport. Uh, I was planning on buying a model plate for duty free, but they have to sell them. <laughs> so, uh, I'm probably not going to buy anything today, unfortunately. So, in complete contradiction to what I said, I actually went and ordered a hot chocolate. Uh, just really wanted a nice hot drink, you know what I mean? You can't have a nice like one, a nice one drink to us in the She bought some Whisper bites in the airport, so nice compliments.
dim the lights. Uh, we're not far from Moose, about 40 minutes away, I believe. Um, we're on a bicycle flight, we met a lot of people on this flight. It's so hot on here, look how Jimmy put me wrist up against the wind. That's just the end of it. Coldness, the wind is absolutely freezing. It's like, it's, it's like a sauna in here. A few years ago, I flew back home with uh, Thomas Cook from Mexico. Uh, the British of the I went to Cancun. Uh, I, as, if you've watched my channel uh, since I saw it was earlier this year, you know that I went last year with Tui. So, yeah, definitely go and check that Dreamliner video. It was a fantastic place. This has been a great time, but not as good as that. Uh, basically, on back to 2014 anyway, the flight was so hot. It was like a sauna, I had to throw it how hot it was. <laughs> So, this is, I think Thomas Cook just likes heating up his planes. <laughs> I've managed to work out the, uh, the air convent in the, in the sea, and so we're fine now. <laughs> so, we are now just heading into the Dodecanese Islands, just past over coffee where we went to in 2015, and we're now beginning our descent into Rodox. This is uh, going to be fantastic. Landed just before 1 o'clock, so we're delayed for around an hour. A bit of fog, but nothing to do with it all, so we've got a great copy. Uh, there's a tiny cup of fruit. So. We have just landed at Rhodes Diagoras, uh, we'll make our way to the terminal now. Uh, very nice flight with Thomas Gold, I'll tell you more about what I thought of the flight later. So we're not standing, waiting for our bags. This has been absolutely through this, this uh, horse of videos. Okay, so we're now through the airport. The immigration was like out of the door in the queue into the immigration area and customs was like out of the door of the terminal. We then got to the which we then took around 40 minutes to get through that and then the baggage claimed there was no signs on where to go anywhere. So we literally had to just guess which one and we on to find our cases now. Two in the morning. <laughs> well actually half two actually. And we landed at 10 to 1. So as you can see I have no media to vote. I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around. It's now time for the most important part of the video which is my conclusion. I'm going to tell you the good and bad points of our flight with Thomas Cook from Manchester to Rhodes. So we're going to start off with the good points. The first good point was the crew. The cabin crew were very attentive and did many drinks rounds. The cockpit crew were also fantastic. Due to the delay, the cockpit crew did go out of their way to welcome passengers to the cockpit, which was a very nice talk to them and something they didn't have to do. So I'd like to thank them for that. The good point is the cabin, it was very clean and modern and was very comfortable for the four hour sector that we were flying on to Rhodes. The final good point was Manchester Airport. While the passengers weren't very organised, the staff certainly were and we got through very quickly. So unfortunately we now have to move on to the longer list of bad points. The first bad point was Rhodes Airport. Rhodes Airport was extremely disorganised. We had to queue on the tarmac at Customs. Also, suitcases were coming off random baggage belts, meaning that passengers didn't have a clue where to go to obtain their luggage. And there's also a lack of signage in the baggage reclaim area, meaning that ultimately, ultimately you have to split yourselves up and find your bags off different belts. The next bad point is also one that is out of Thomas Cook's control, and that is the one hour delay at Manchester. They, however, they did make up for this by allowing passengers into the cockpit. But overall, this was a lengthy wait. The next point seems a bit strange to me because Thomas Cook's website and Thomas Cook's Inflate magazine 
states that shorter flights have entertainment in the form of a drop down screen and a radio. However, the, none of these seem to be working during this flight, and there were certainly no screens on board. So, one next bad point is the website. The website is very poorly designed and looks a bit outdated. When we were checking on online, we, uh, we thought we had to check in twice, that's how badly laid out it is. So as you can see, I definitely do not like their website. <laughs> Another bad point was the flight time. We were scheduled to depart Manchester at 5.50pm and land at 5 past 12. However, we were delayed by an hour and landed at 1am. So this is very late and especially those with younger children may, may find this a less attractive flight time. However, most flights to roads are very late at night, especially from the UK. We finally make it to our final bad point, and that is the seats. I'm not talking about the specific hard product of seats, I'm talking about uh, where you sit on the plane. And something that I noticed about this flight was that many passengers, especially families, were split up. We were split up, however, we were on two separate buttons due to our reservation with Love Holidays. That's got nothing to do with Thomas Cook, like I say. However, I did notice that some families who hadn't pre booked their seats were split up by five rows or so. So that is something that is worth mentioning that if you are planning to fly with Thomas Cook, I would recommend to pre-book your seats. So we finally make it to the end of the video and I'm not going to tell you if I recommend Thomas Cook on this particular route and the answer is I do recommend them. I think that what you get with Thomas Cook is pretty similar to what you get with any short or Atlantic like EasyJet 2 uh, on European holiday flights. I would say that if you are looking for a more different experience, then I would recommend Jet 2 in that case, even if they are more expensive. I think you do offer some different facilities and experiences, such as in resort check-in for your flight home, which some of you may appreciate. So I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of this video, and thank you for watching, of course, as well as I'd like to thank you for your loyalty to the channel and all your kindness. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another travel-related video here on Peace Amelia Travel.